Expedition Overland is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Magpul. Hard goods and apparel. Warn. Go prepared. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Equipped Expedition Outfitters. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Xventure Trailers. And in association with Toyota. Let's go places. We are in Colombia. We have made our way out of port and have explored the northern region of Colombia with our guide Federico. Today we have pushed hard to just outside of Bogota to meet up with a few folks. Edgar, who will be guiding us into southern Colombia, and a couple of Kurt's overlander friends, Alex and Claire. This is uh, Alex and Claire. They're traveling, they started in France and they've been traveling. We, we hung out, uh, yeah, 18 months ago now, huh? Alex and Claire have been able to make overlanding their full-time lifestyle. They have been exploring Colombia now for three months, but on the road for three years. We've camped in a lot of different places already. And I think this is my first racetrack. This is really nice to get into camp at a decent hour and we could actually sit down and cook a big meal and hang out together, have a beer with some friends. We kind of, I think, I know I really needed just kind of a reset, so I'm really excited about this. It's gonna be good. The meal is spot on. Everyone is relaxing, enjoying a killer spaghetti dinner. After dinner, we say our formal goodbyes to our friend Federico and have him sign our expedition flag. I don't know exactly where's Montana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. thanks, absolutely. Thanks. Really, thanks. What an amazing time. Yeah. Yeah. We have another round to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tomorrow. And Edgar is going to take you to some really nice places. Uh, right. Edgar will be our guide for the next few days. He's a former airline employee, traveling the world on a daily basis. But he is an overlander at heart, and he has started a new company, Overland Columbia to help people explore his country. You have prepared some awesome stuff for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. So you have a nice evening. You too. Thank you too, sir. Have a nice you. rest, all right? Thank yep. you very much. We definitely plan to see more diverse areas than what we have seen so far. Several mountain passes and a desert are in our near future. The next morning, we wake up to a nice surprise. The racetrack owner, Daniel, has come over to show us his rigs, and in particular, his Dakar rig. The Takar Rally is one of the hardest off-road races in the world. Kurt being a Baja 1000 competitor and Rochelle being a navigation rally girl became captivated in stories and their car. I'll be staying with him for a few weeks. <laughs> One of the many cool things about this rig is the built-in jacks that allow quick tire changes during a race. <laughs> it's a cool group of guys, that's for sure. Before setting out, Federico surprises us with a taste of Colombian delicacy. Huge <laughs> roasted ant butts. Pop the whole thing, pop the whole thing. Pop the whole thing in. All right, Clay. Right. I'll stain your teeth all day, Clay. <laughs> Very salty. Yeah. Yeah. Charcoal farms around here and they just collect them and it's not too bad. Little uh different they go texture. In a little shoot, go to the ends of them are a little squishy. Oh, but 
Yeah. It tastes kind of oh. like roasted peanuts. I couldn't look at it. I just had to like... <laughs> I'm eating a peanut. I'm eating a peanut. It's a peanut. <laughs> with legs. With, with legs. With legs. That... Ah. Yeah. With that much driving passion flying around this morning, it's easy to be pumped up for a big day behind the wheel. As overlanders, the driving aspect is a big reason to why we do this. It's fun. And we all take driving very serious, never ceasing to become better at it. Spending the greater part of the day just winding up through the mountains. And uh, there's certain environments that definitely make you feel better than others, you know? And mountains are that for me. Being in the mountains is like life-giving. I love it, you know? So being, being here today, being able to travel up these windy roads has been just so awesome. And we almost didn't do this section. I mean, the best stuff is always found where you're not expecting it. I'm telling you, this is an overlander's dream. Colombia is ready. You need to come overland through Colombia. Later that afternoon, we passed through some storms, which add some additional flavor to the surface. Edgar is uh, running up the side of the road here Apparently there was a rock slide at one point, so he's just making sure that it's been opened up. Columbia is notorious for rock slides and mud slides, and you can see you can see why. I mean, it's driving through it. The hills are just they're more mud than rock. So with the amount of rain that they get, it's it's like no mystery why they slide all the time. So right now we've got mud on the road. Some storm just went through here minutes before we got here, and it is super slick. So, finally getting to play a little bit in the mud, but personally, this is about all the mud I want. Okay, that's all clear, you can calm down. Thank you. Head your way. Columbia has this mysterious feeling about it. It makes you want to keep looking further. At an elevation of 13,000 feet, these cacti grow less than a tenth of an inch every year. Many of these are over 200 years old. Most of their water comes from the dew and the mist of the high mountain clouds. That evening, we dropped over 10,000 feet to the valley floor ending in a small desert region of central Colombia, the desert of Tatacoa. Good morning. Welcome to day eight. It's the start of day eight. This is our first slow morning, so it's our first chance to, to kind of walk you through it. We've been arriving late at night and getting up really early in the morning. Usually our wake ups, uh, some of us are waking up at 5, 5.15, 5.30 in the morning. The rest of us are up at six and trying to be uh, wheels up by seven. Got Heather and Rochelle sleeping in the Easy On rooftop tent up here. Then on the trailer, we've got Ty and Jeff. We put Ty and Jeff together because they're both really early morning people. So they like to get up and so are Rochelle and uh, Heather, they get up early too. So we put those people together Someone who wakes up early isn't waking up the other person who doesn't have to get up at six. And usually the camera crews are working late into the night and sleep later in the morning. And cooks and mechanics are getting up early in the morning to do their jobs. So we're transporting four people in the Land Cruiser. So we've got personal gear that all slides in there. Some recovery equipment, some film equipment, and medical gear on that side. In the trailer, 
we've got it filled with a lot of our just kind of our camp needs this is a toolbox so it's full of tool rolls anything that we need throughout the day when we're like working on things like jeff's just tuning on stuff right now so he's in and out of this box we've got a garbage can back there and then the front of it it's just extra fuel jerrys that are empty and some water jerrys that are empty until we determine that we need that much fuel so we're not driving around with really heavy equipment going to rufio here we've got nate and kurt sleeping up here and uh, this truck right now is used as the uh production truck so nate who's on camera right now is in there at night and he's offloading the footage from the day and sometimes i'll go in there and sit and watch him or Eric will sit in there and we'll look through the footage and see how it's going just so we know where we are and keeping on track with the season. In the back of Rufio, there's a few organizational things. There's we set personal bags on the front, a food drawer in the back, a secondary fridge from the primary fridge that is in uh, X3, our Tacoma. This is a 2016 Tacoma. So Eric Olson and myself are sleeping in this one. And it's also the main galley. So as you can see, Heather's cranking on some food there, cook under it. It has a natural built-in awning. So it, it just, in a, in a big open system versus any other truck. So that's why it's become the primary galley. It's kind of a no brainer for us. We're real excited about getting out today. It's gonna be the a desert and we haven't seen anything like a desert in Colombia. You just never know what you're gonna get down here, but it's it's so cool to see. Such a diverse country. Yep, I'm there. Edgar arrives to show us around again, but this time in his beautiful classic Nissan Patrol. Wow. Have you restored it? Yes. Uh, on my budget. <laughs> yeah. I did what I could. I changed, uh, you had a fiber cabin. Uh huh. So I changed it to a canvas. Yeah, that's really nice. Is that company you were saying makes them down here, huh? Uh huh. All by, by hand. Ty is perpetually curious, and he's found an interesting plant. And this uh, comes from the Mayas and, and Stecas. Ah. Mm -hmm. So what they do is that they dry it on the sun, okay. and then um, after it is dry, very dry, they uh, toast it. Okay. Oh, okay. Right? They take, the, they peel it, mm -hmm. and then they um, grind it. Crush it. Grind it. Oh, okay. Wow. So that's, that's what the, where the, the, chocolate, where the, yeah. the powder comes from. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Wow. That's good. It starts like that, ends like chocolate. To Who make that. figured that out? Like, what are we going to do with this to bean? Let's crush it up and it, toast it. I guess they didn't have much to do, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this won't be the first interesting thing that we see today. The desert of Tatakoa is a microclimate desert, only 330 square kilometers in size. What are they called again? Italian. Edgar says these are called pacayas. They're just a little fruit that you pluck out of the cactus. They look like little chili peppers, but they're super good. You break it open, and they have like a little kiwi. Same texture as a kiwi. Same little seeds that they have in there, but they almost taste like a, well, almost tastes like bubble gum, to be honest with you. It's like the closest thing I can get. Mmm. Super good. Oh my goodness. Isn't that cool? They just look like a little chili pepper. So one of the cool things that Edgar told us is all this black stone out here in the black sand, this is actually uh, used to be the bottom of a swamp or a seabed. It was actually right next to a sea. There's a lot of fossils. So we're at Edgar's friend's place who started this museum in the middle of this desert, um, but he's basically been collecting fossils all these years and then put them in a museum for people to come see. What you're looking at there is fossils collected over this man's lifetime. Every time it rains, more are exposed, and he walks the area finding more crazy fossils. And if you look really closely, you can find things in, uh, around the desert. That's, I found like two or three. The museum owner also has a darker past. At one point, he was forced to work in the cocaine fields. This is the press to squeeze the liquid from the cocaine before it was dried. 
That's handmade. Cool. A machete catches Ty's eye. You put it like this. Oh, so you pull it across your like body. Like, like this. So you would get it like this. Okay. Oh, sure. See? Sure. That makes sense. And then wear pants. Sharp. Wear pants. <laughs> and maybe uh, knee uh, <laughs> knee guards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful. This one. This one is very sharp. It's very affilado, you know. I won't let that one down. <laughs> it's only been four nope. years. Nope. Muchas gracias. Yes. Gracias. gracias. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Want to start? No. It's clicking your starter, but not enough. Let's, we, should we bump start it and see if it'll... Maybe it was just... Did you check your battery cables? How are they on the uh, on the battery? Just they look okay? We're just going to push it. Do a little bump start. Ready or not? Go for it. Awesome. Just up the way, we come across a field strewn with small cars, each one symbolizing the love of a family member. Family. Uh, mom, dad, brother, sister. So this one is for Cyrus. Ryder. And this one is for Eli. Hope they're doing good back home. Mom and dad are out on adventure. So this piece he picked up oh. is actually a chunk of coral. And you can they, uh, totally see. It's crazy. It's super heavy too. It stays right. Remember when we were in Belize, yeah. diving those like narrow, so canyon thingies like it's imagine. like diving through this right yeah right? like you can imagine what this looked like underwater yeah that's really cool gives you a whole new way to look at it nobody killed here just a few kilometers up the road the topography changes again as we arrive at the red desert tower okay uh, as you can see the ground has changed color now it's more orange uh, the part that we were before it was like black now this is orange uh, if you can see on the tower over there that's the first level what it was before a long time ago so uh, it's been like raining and the wind and everything else is uh, raining all the the, uh, the soil changes it's all constantly changing it goes without saying that Tatakoa Desert is a special place. And now we have the privilege of staying the night at another special place, Edgar's father-in-law's dairy farm. Okay, um, we're gonna camp tonight at my stepfather's farm. And uh, the, whole, the whole farm belongs to, the, to his family. And, um, what we're going to camp is uh, rounded by um, a stone fence. And it's a very old house. It's about 200 years old. Edgar shows us around the place with a great sense of pride. People from Colombia come to this uh, villa, this estate villa. So here I could do the carrot. They got chicken over there. There's an owl right there. What's staring the baby owl? Uh -huh. no that way. is oh my cool. gosh. So the mother will still be around. Yeah, so cool. Hello. 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 Uh, you can grab them. Really? Yeah. yeah. They they uh, they they're taking care of them. Oh really? Oh. So the mother died or something like that? Oh. How do you grab them? Looks like she's, she's gonna done. teach you how to do it. Oh, show me your ways. Oh, oh, holy cow! No yeah, way. Nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is so amazing. Hello. Oh my god. Hello. How do you say owl in, in Spanish? Bull. Yeah. Hey, so, oh. What's about it in there? Come here, buddy. Just, uh, here. Wow. That is so freaking cool. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, they know how to fly. Yeah. Edgar 
got us a gift. Edgar brings us a local dairy delicacy. With a guava candy. Yeah, made of candy. So please taste it. Mm. Yeah, it's like cream cheese. That's a special, that's a special okay. cheese that they do here. It's like cheese Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, you guys need to try this. It's smooth. Now we have the other one. <laughs> they cook it, they cook it and they keep on uh, uh, mixing it, mixing it, mixing wow. it until it gets yeah. like that. Small cheese is like a variation of mm. uh, cheese. It's good. Oh, yeah. This, this is that your house. Great. Oh, thank this, you. Okay. Whole country is your house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so please uh, enjoy your stay here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Thanks so much. Right. Have a nice evening. We'll see you in, in the morning. We decided to add a little of that delicious cheese into our fajita meal. It turned out to be one of the best meals of the trip. You know, some say that overlanding is merely just driving somewhere exotic to eat something. Yeah which I suppose oh, I is a perfectly acceptable definition. Wait, oh my word. Life's good. Ooh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel awesome. I know, it's a good night. <laughs> the next morning, we get to hang out with the family a bit. Gracias. <laughs> Roswell. <laughs> <laughs> the milk has been collected from the cows, oh, no. and we are awaiting the pickup crew. <laughs> Heather finds her happy place. She's a true, pure-hearted Montana girl. Yeah, <laughs> this is so awesome. So what's going on is this, these guys are the, the local uh, milk collectors. They actually come around to all these little farms, including the farm we stayed at last night. Uh, and they're just grabbing the milk from all the from all the local farms here, and uh, a lot of these folks here are related to Edgar. Um, this is his in-laws' place, but they're all uh, they are all related to each other, and they share this 1,000 hectares. Um, so there's lots of little farms right here, and these guys are just doing the rounds, collecting all the milk from this morning, and then they'll take it into town and sell it. Pretty cool. This is an experience hard to come by these days. I find it a privilege to see things like this performed in the old ways. We are on the final stretches of our Colombian adventure. Colombia's beauty just doesn't stop. Edgar signs off in the small town of Papaya. Patch for you. You've earned it. Thank you. <laughs> Just only, put it here. Only some are getting that one. That's this year's expedition patch. Awesome. Get it? See ya. Thank you, President. All right. Take care, sir. Take, Take care. care. Bless you. It's hard to say goodbye, but we have to keep wishing south. We wish Edgar the best in his endeavors. This country is batting 100 on quality folks. So we're just about to wrap up a Colombian adventure. If anything we can do while we're here is just to show people a different side of Colombia because this is an overlander's paradise. I've really, really enjoyed Colombia my whole life. As long as I can remember, I've had this, uh, uh, this desire to come to this country. It's more beautiful than I thought it would be. The people are nicer than I thought they'd ever be. Uh, I never felt in danger, and it's just ripe for the picking. People need to come here and start exploring this country, because it is rad. I have fallen in love with this country. I am 100% coming back. We made some great contacts down here. I mean, the mountains are unreal, and how these people thrive in the mountainsides uh, and, and grow, their, grow their goods out there, and how incredibly generous and wonderful they've been. What a what a blessed surprise this place has been. But I will most certainly be coming back here. I am I am in love with this place. You know, another big hurdle. The first big hurdle was getting trucks out of the port. Now the next hurdle is getting trucks into Ecuador. So it's our first border, border to border crossing of this expedition. And the first one's always just kind of a, we'll see how it goes. 
people, you know, we got half the people that haven't done this before, and half of us haven't done it in a while. So, we'll see how it goes today. New horizons are ahead. But first, we've got to get into Ecuador. So we'll see you on the other side. Join us next time for an all-new episode of Expedition Overland.